Welcome to our uh, Red Dress Day event that is being uh, live streamed across the nation from different uh, communities that have signed up to join us as well from BC to uh, Ontario and, and beyond. A lot of uh, well-wishers and, and uh, people who are concerned about the issues that we are raising here today. So my name is Tony Snow. I am the Indigenous Minister for the Chinookwins region of the United Church of Canada. And I welcome you on behalf of the Stony people to one of our sacred areas here in the Banff area, what we call Minurkpa. And this is one of the uh, sacred ceremonial areas that we come to for healing, that we come to for uh, rejuvenation, and is now a, a tourist town. But we are, are learning to uh, work together through the uh, memorandum of understanding, the historic memorandum of understanding that was signed in 2010, and the work that continues to be done here at Rundle to uh, promote reconciliation and the work in the community. So we are very glad to have those in attendance and also those who are uh, watching us from uh, various parts of the country. So I introduce to you uh, Gloria Snow, who is my sister and also the, a student minister with the Chinookwins region, uh, working uh, toward her Master of Divinity and is also uh, one of our uh, traditional knowledge keepers and a one of our matriarchs in our, in our community. So I turn this over to Gloria and thank you. Ishnish Pinimach Amboastich de Gunchua Mintan Jastabi. I greet you all today on this very important day of Red Dress Day. As we gather today, May 5th, 2022, it marks the day that we observe Red Dress Day across Turtle Island. And as we go forth and we observe, we work together, we share together, we lament together. Today is an especially important day as we gather we had many vigils, many walks, many events previous to, to right now. And I was happy to be part of the Bow Valley High School walk. And what happened there was miraculous. When we had the students come out, we had half a dozen students. And then they brought signs and they brought signs. And at the end of it, the whole entire school walked with us in our vigil. So over three or 400 students carrying signs, hearing the songs, and learning about Red Dress Day. A momentous thing across this country that our young people, our youth, are taking the reins. They're moving forward and they're looking at reconciliation. So when I was asked to be part of this group, I thought it was just going to be a little talk and then we were done. But we walked throughout around a lake area. We had singers, we had matriarchs, we had prayer, and we honored our women. As we work forward to promote, um, I would like to ask um, in protocols for my Auntie Glenda to do an opening prayer before we start. It's important to observe these traditions. When we do ceremonial things, when we do a day such as today, our elders will come, they will pray. So I give this into cubby to my Auntie Glenda to pray today. She's also a DLM and as part of our work within Rundle and Ralph Connor, uh, I'll ask Glenda to pray. Ishnish Chengabith Aktuabi Wam Shikinda Waka in Nunden Nunden Bayan Yabinde, Nahinshi Chabunj. Near the way I'm Yam Chenu Stamanke, Togada Ektani Ubike, Abande Numines Nahakian Winchagitia, Nimi Winchaku. Gazangia Hechi Ubit, Opeum Chagijawa, Nimi Munchaku, Nien Wakande, Nichinchi Chargekums, Jesus Christ, Amen.
Um, as we've done in the procession, you saw a grand entry. We brought in the red dresses. We brought in the banners that you see in front. And these talk about the reconciliation works that we've done in the Bow Valley to look at the calls to action, how to be a good ally, how to do an observance of, of such a magnitude and such importance. As our women are the recipients of this day honored, we uh, today in Red Dress Day, it's a day that calls for all to speak out against violence against Indigenous women, girls, and gender diverse peoples. Red Dress Day is a day to remember our murdered and missing Indigenous women, girls, to spirit. It is a time to raise awareness as we undertake to and seek redress for the harms perpetuated against our Indigenous women. We are seeking to educate ourselves and to educate about as well, not only for our murdered and missing Indigenous women, girl, and two spirit, but for our men and boys as well, because this perpetuates all Indigenous people. Red Dress started as an installation presented by Métis artist Jamie Black, and it was to link the issues of murdered and missing Indigenous women in Canada and the United States. It features a series of red dresses that were, miss, that were representing missing women who were victims of violence. Red Dress Day is now held annually to commemorate murdered missing Indigenous women, girls, and Two-Spirit people. We see and witness as we hang red dresses, as we wear the red dress, or we wear red. We know that they are empty, and we invoke the missing loved one here. They are still here in our hearts they are still here. As well, we seek justice. We say their names, we honor their memory. We hang a red dress, we light a vigil candle. We wear red as a sign of solidarity on Red Dress Day. As we look into the National Inquiry on Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls, it was released that the inquiry made 231 calls for justice and included that the acts of violence against Indigenous women, girls, and gender diverse people in Canada constitutes genocide. As we think about these things, what can we do? Some of the recommendations that came out of this was to engage with communities through a culturally relevant gender-based analysis to address and end systemic violence that impacts Indigenous women, girls, and gender diverse peoples and their families and communities. Provide Indigenous women, girls, and gender diverse peoples with the option and opportunity of removing themselves from abusive relationships through community and network support. To enhance, promote, and foster the social, economic, cultural, and political well being of Indigenous women, girls, and gender diverse peoples. Today, I honor my late auntie, Evelyn Snow. She was a murdered missing Indigenous woman in our family. She was found in one of our recent uh, towns uh, among uh, tragic circumstances. She was found and the pain is real even now. As we deal with this with my auntie and her family, there is a legacy we are carrying on for her children. So as we walk, as we light a candle, as we say her name, we are seeking justice for my auntie and for the many thousands of murder missing Indigenous women. I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak to you today. And I'm humbled by our murder missing Indigenous women, their legacy, their history. And I'm also humbled by the task ahead as we work forward, we are reclaiming power and place for our murdered and missing Indigenous women. That we walk together in a good way and remember our murdered and missing always. As we go forward, I also have an idea of looking at songs, looking at healing, looking at lighting a candle 
And so for now, if um, we would like to at this time, there is a candles and the tapers there if people wanted to light a candle, either throughout this whole process, because these are very um, open and visceral wounds when we talk of our missing women, our missing girls, our missing family members. So I invite you to come and do that throughout the procession. Um, I'll have um, Trudy come up, also our other DLM to say a few words. Hello everyone, um, today um, we are mourning ourselves, Our uh, my uncle passed away, so we are also in mourning, but we also mourn for the thousands of uh, women and girls who were murdered, and we, we want justice, seek justice, and uh, and um, we, um, the symbols, the red dress means, uh, red means the uh, blood, mm -hmm. blood that, um, that you see on uh, the, the symbols, but uh, we also think of the, the blood of Christ, which, uh, which, um, uh, that we um, during this time we uh, we do vigils like lighting the candle and we, we also remember Christ who will help us in this journey that we uh, find justice for the families who are suffering and grieving. Thank you. So for Trudy and Glenda, again, being part of this church has been important for them to have a voice to speak on these important issues with murdered and missing Indigenous women. I'm going to read a sh short uh, part of Psalm 102 because I think it, it speaks to uh, the lament. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come unto thee. Hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble. Incline thy ear unto me, and the day when I call, answer me speedily. For my days are consumed like smoke, and my bones are burned as a hearth. My heart is smitten and withered like grass, so that I forget to eat my bread. By, voice, by reason of the voice of my groaning, my bones cleave to my skin. I am like a pelican of the wilderness, I am like an owl of the desert. I watch and as a sparrow alone upon the housetop. Mine enemies reproach me all the day and they that are mad against me are sworn against me. For I have eaten ashes like bread and mingled my drink with weeping. So as we see the images of suffering and lament, these women, our relatives, they're alone. They're lamenting, they've lost their way. And we do everything in our power to seek justice, to find the truth, to hear their story, and to try to do better, honor their memory, honor who they are, because they are matriarchs, they are mothers, they are grandmothers, they are sisters, they are aunties, they are friends, they are the unspoken, the lost ones. So as we have our voice to speak, we go forward. I'd like to have uh, my husband Ken come do up a song just as for uh, when we lament we sing and um, we sang all the way through the procession with the students and I know his voice is a little hard, hoarse but uh, if I could uh, get a song um, that would be that would be great. We're always instituting our culture way wherever we can. It's important because 
In the United Church, we are, we are together. We are free to be with the culture. That which was taken away through re residential school, we are now trying to institute that back through residential school uh, awareness and through reconciliation efforts. So to have this in this day and age, we, we cherish that. The fact that we can come to a church and we can be part on our traditional lands and celebrate and honor our women in song and in poignant remembrance. Okay. Oh, uh, good day. This is a somber day, but we overcome many great things. And we're here today to share with you our strength, our resiliency, our compassion for the heart of our people, which is our women. So with that, the heartbeat of the drum is our center point, is our women. They're the life givers. There's the ones that are the water keepers. And in so understanding, we, we have our Blessed Mother, the two we see as the white buffalo calf woman. So I'm gonna sing that song and maybe we can sing another hymn. Maybe we can get my in-laws to come up and we'll sing a hymn too. Mm -hmm. Because we, we recognize and uh, we recognize this we're, we're in this walk together. Mm. Oh, sing which is a particular song we sing and just because um, you had the passing of my uncle uh, a day Wallace snow from our nation um, this song is a song of lament so when we sing we're calling uh, them forward the angels to come forward and if Trudy and Glenda, do you want to join? Or John as well? Jesus, we shall 
this time, I'd like to ask uh, my dear friend, Hawaii Ohana Kaunoi, if you could say a few words. Aloha mai, aloha mai. Usually it seems like my voice echoes a little louder in my parish, but it could be because it's half the size and maybe the same amount of people. <laughs> um, aloha no kako, which means hello to everyone. Um, I'm not uh, adjusted to the time zone, which is fine, so I don't know if I'm saying <laughs> aloha kakaiaka, aloha ahi ahi, or uh, what point in time, but aloha, aloha everyone. It is uh, a great pleasure to be here, um, not recognizing that I would be able to uh, memorialize this day with you all here in Banff at this particular um, sanctuary for such a great cause, and a great cause in such a way that God works through us in allowing for us to be alongside one another in ensuring that these types of incidents never happen again. And that is a great inspiration for me um, to have such divine timing to be here in this space and time. And uh, it, what comes to mind um, for me and my people, and we call ourselves Kanaka Maoli, which is uh, mankind generated from the islands of Hawaii. Um, and. Uh, by day, I'm an archaeologist, and by every other moment of my fiber, I want to be a servant um, for God. And I really enjoy uh, my ministerial practices that I'm able to share with not only my community faith, but those that I've um, been blessed to be with. And uh, I've attended seminary with the Snow families for about five, six years and uh, three of us are graduating next week. And to me, that's monumental. I think we're one of the largest classes graduating in quite some time. And we actually get to um, participate in an in-person convocation next week, Tuesday at uh, Christ Church Cathedral in Vancouver. And I, I believe it's a great privilege to be having these types of events with my sisters and brothers here in Banff prior to that ceremony and convocation with our Anglican seminary there. And so um, in my um, discernment in going into ministry, um, I was recently ordained pending call in the UCC, but also able to have completed seminary while going through that discernment. And I've witnessed all of our challenges as indigenous people, uh, myself as a woman, a mother, and also a servant of God, utmost. So it's been a great um, experience, and I'm very blessed to have uh, fellowship time with all of you here. 
not so much for the purpose, but all more so for the opportunity to bring awareness to ourselves in ensuring that in our God's works, we can walk alongside one another and perpetuating better and new things. So it's a privilege to be here in fellowship with you all, especially my brothers and sisters um, from this lands. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge all of your lands and I'm learning a lot of the different tribes and I'm gracious to be family with this tribe, but I learned we have brothers and sisters nearby also and learning all of the indigenous names of the areas, not only acknowledging what they are, but knowing who they are, what they are. And there's so many, and, and I'm so blessed to be here. We have our own mountains in Hawaii, but they're not as much. I think just that captured range could be a fragment of our island chain. I don't even know, but I'm truly blessed. And you guys are all blessed to be able to wake up to this every day. Thank you so much. Sneeze. Thank you, sister. So in sort of closing, um, I just wanted to add, what can you do on May 5th? And for what we've shared today, um, it's very uh, visual that we wear red, uh, that you use the hashtags, post your picture on social media, post the statistics, and you share your reason for wearing a red dress or ribbon skirt, hang a red dress from your yard, porch, window, donate to organizations, grassroots that work directly with murdered and missing indigenous women, girls, two-spirit, murdered and missing indigenous peoples, families, and others to encourage to donate. Drop off a care package if you know of a family that is murdered missing indigenous women to spirit. Show up to virtual discussions like the one tonight, vigils, walks, and any space where families and advocates are taking the time to organize and educate. So we're so blessed and I'm so grateful for everyone that came today to mark this special observance day. And as we gather, as we light a candle, we say the name of our loved one, we must never forget, as murdered missing Indigenous women, girls, two-spirit, they are waiting for us. They are waiting for action. With that, I'd like to introduce my brother, Tony Snow, Indigenous Minister for Chinook Winds Region, and uh, a few words um, in discussion as well, and the closing prayer. Tony. Uh, thank you. As part of the closing, it's a reminder of why we are here. Brittany Bearspaw was 16 and was found dead on the Trans Canada Highway in 2006. Cheryl Lynn Black, also known as Cheryl Ford, was killed when she was 46. Delena Left Hand Dixon was a 20-year-old mother who was shot and killed in August 2008. Desiree Old Woman was last seen near her home in Siksika, close to Gleeshan, unable to care for herself. She's been missing since 2011. Joey uh, Tilla Patricia English was 25, was a mother of three and a member of the Bikani Nation. Linda Mae Scott, 29, was from the Blood Reserve in Alberta. Our family last heard from her in 2000. Misty Faith Potts uh, is a, was a mother, is a mother, and was reported missing on March 30th, 2015. Uh, Pauline Brazo was 16 years old and she was stabbed to death on January 8th, 1976. Terry Ann Dauphiné was 24. She was a Métis mother of three with dreams of becoming a pediatrician. Victoria Carl-Ann Crochet was 43 from, the left, from Lethbridge, Alberta. And our aunt um, was killed in the 1970s 
her body was found in Cochrane by the train tracks. There are all these stories, all these lives that we are remembering. And what we remember is that this is not an unsolvable issue. This is something that takes advocacy, something that takes work, something that takes our humanity and our responsibility, especially in the church, uh, where the demonization of Indigenous people has had its repercussions in our community and develop the world that we see today. So we have work to do. So I encourage all to take part in the vigils, to hang a red dress, to remember Sisters in Spirit Day, which is October 4th in Alberta. And we will have a, another memorial service for those women and girls and two-spirit people who are missing and killed. I'm going to sing a song that is a song of lament from our stony tradition. We develop our own hymns in our tradition. So this is a hymn written by Joy Wesley. Adewaka Nibimakuno Wastya hinawo e ya he chano e ya he ao he ya ya ho he ao he e ya he ya he ao he e ya he ao he Closing prayer from our stony language, it is the Lord's Prayer. I'll ask my relatives to also help me to deliver this. Om Chagesi, Om Chagesi, Jesus Christ, Om Chagor Chagesi, Chagamaka, Ugu, Arichin, Arizi, Arigi Chavichan, Nagahaz, Nagu, Gichafnea, Gichia. Amen. And thank you all for joining us and for taking part today. If you want to come up and light a candle again or just be in fellowship with us, we are here for a few minutes. Um, it's a somber day, but we want the observance to be real and shared with family. Which needs pretty much all my relatives. Give them chua. <laughs> 